What were you saying? I said I, I'm a, the breed of I have work ethics and um, just believe that you go in there and do the best job that you can. Even though I'm retired, I'm still going to go in there and do my very best job. That's just my makeup. And I'm from that era where that's what that was all. Baby boomers, that's what we did. We were of uh, the contention that you go in and do give 100, 200% if you have to. Um, why do a half ass job? What did grandmama tell you about, you know? If you're not going to do it right, don't do it at all. So that was a motto that I grew up with. And it, and most of the people that are my age and I talk to, this, they heard the same thing. So that must have been the going thing during that time. Um, do your very, very best. Your work represents who you are. That's always been my motto. My work represents who I am. And I was thinking of terms of you want to treat somebody else's child and give them the best that you can give them because after all, you've got children, grandchildren, whatever. Um, would you not want them to do that for your child? Treat people the way you want to be treated. Teach children the way you want somebody to teach your child. When did you first go into the classroom? Back in 19... I said I graduated in seventy three, nineteen seventy three. Nineteen seventy three. Was my first. It was my first job as a classroom teacher, but I had experience in the classroom as an assistant beforehand. Went to school while I was an assistant in the classroom, and finished my degree. Hmm. Do you think this is your calling? Definitely so. I think this is what I've been called to do. I'm very passionate about what I do. What do you I'm passionate about my job? What do you love the most about see how many years total we talking about? Thirty forty five years? Let's see from seventy three to retired in nineteen ninety one or ninety two. I think ninety two was the last Cause I went back and double dip. So it's been no, uh, it's just been thirty, about thirty two, thirty three years. So what has been? What do you love the most about this? Seeing children bloom like a flower, light bulb going off. That's the most rewarding thing. Uh, seeing children uh, loving. To be at school and loving to learn, their quest for learning. Hmm. What was your secret? You know, back in the day, you would always get some of the worst uh, students. You know, as far as track record, what was your? One of your secrets, especially like getting them to read. You know, when you say your 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 reading <clears throat> level was the lowest at the start of the year, or the start of the year. Building up, building uh, a sense of confidence that they could do it, and and accentuating the things that they could do, and uh, being very positive. My mindset was positive toward those children. And also letting them and making them understand that they were good, they were smart, and they could do. And I think once a child feels that they can do or accomplish um, a goal, then they will strive for it. Hmm. Why do you think corporations have gotten so involved with education, you know. I think it's more money, more about money and maybe control. I, I, I'm trying to figure that out myself, but I think it's mostly about the money. It's a money-making situation. Mm -hmm.
Hmm. It could work if you had people in there that uh, were trained and they were passionate. But I, I, I think their their goal is the money. Was was the experience better when it, schools were segregated? Most definitely. Why? Hmm. There was a sense of community, a sense of, hmm. I think basically because, let's go back and say, not only segregated, but neighborhood schools. Mm -hmm. I would like to just go over, but not talk about just segregation, but the neighborhood school, because teachers were, teachers knew the children, knew the families, uh, parents were able to walk to the school and be involved. When we segregated, children were dispersed all across the city. You mean bust? Bust, yeah, bust all across the city. And um, parents, a lot of parents did not have uh, ample transportation. And then we dumbed them down and made them feel less than human because we began to send buses to bring parents even to PTA meetings and things like that. And I just think that it just did something to the morale. Mm -hmm. um, and just, it was just, a, it was just the worst thing that ever happened. Do you think when they did that, they were actually trying to make, trying to make an improvement or that it was contrived or it was, you know, it was something that was premeditated? It was premeditated. <coughs> I know when we, when, when, um, in our situation, when our children were bused to um, the affluent, what they thought was the affluent white area, they, we were told that if the children would um, be in a classroom for children who are affluent, that that was going to rub off on our children. Oh, Ronald Reagan trickle down thing. Mm -hmm which didn't mean a thing. So what was your experience like when you got over there in that, you know, this is going from William Randolph, which was a neighborhood school, which which all of us went to, to IRB Jones, which is in the affluent North Asheville uh, area. Well, number one, we had, to go and, we had to go and prove ourselves because number one, they thought we were the worst teachers in uh, Asheville City Schools, that's what they thought about the teachers from Randolph. Um, and uh, we had a lot of parents that would come in and observe in our classrooms to try to find out what our secrets were, uh, how we taught, how we handled children. And once they found out that we were the cream of the crop, then they were going to the office and um, requesting that their children be placed in our classrooms. Hmm. So much so that um, there was an overflow because they wanted their children in our classroom because not only did we teach, we knew how to love the children. Hmm. And I think that's the key. And it was just not plastic, superficial. They realized that we were really for the children and they had never experienced anything like that before. Mm. Well, thank you very much. We will come back and talk again.